You're sitting it works on the fence. fence really well. Fence sitter. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Sarah Moore and we're here in my backyard of Squamish, British Columbia where we are wearing spandex and pushing watts for the cross country field test. We're here to talk about the Trek Super Caliber, which Trek says is an entirely new kind of cross country bike. We'll say it's a modern reincarnation of the soft tail, not quite a hard tail and not quite a full suspension bike. Whether or not that Goldilocks positioning is just clever marketing, there's no denying that the Super Caliber is a cross country race bike with 60 millimeters of rear travel, 100 millimeters fork, and 29 inch wheels across all sizes. In fact, this is the same bike that Yolanda Neff rode to victory in the Tokyo test event last year. Let's get into the frame details. The Trek Super Caliber, like most of Trek's bikes, features the knock block. It also has integrated cable routing and there's room for two water bottles inside that main triangle. With a 69 degree head tube angle, the handling on this Super Caliber is definitely on the sharper side. Partner that with a 74 degree effective seat tube angle and you have a cross country bike. At 5'7", I'm riding Trek's medium large, which is an 18 and a half size frame. And that medium comes with a 440 millimeter reach, which they've paired with a 70 millimeter stem. With that 69 degree head tube angle and 430 millimeter chain stays, this wheelbase is 1,121 millimeters, which makes it the shortest bike we have here. The Super Caliber 9.9 .9 that we're testing here is available in five sizes. That's a 15 and a half through a 21 inch. But if you look at some of the other Super Caliber models, you can also get it in a 23 inch size. And now let's talk about the suspension design. There's definitely something different going on with this bike. This design doesn't have the complexity or the hardware that a traditional suspension design does. Because the shock is structural, in theory, the design should have less lateral flex. The size medium frame uh, Trek claims weighs 1900 grams and the size 18 and a half that we have here, the medium large, weighs in at 21 and a half pounds. To control that massive 60 millimeters of squish, there's a bar mounted lockout, which controls both the fork and the rear shock at the same time. Suspension duties are handled by Fox's 32 fork on the front with 100 millimeters and they work with Fox on the ISO strut design as well. You're not gonna find a budget version of the Super Caliber. There's just carbon everywhere in all of these different models. The frames start at $3,699 and to get a complete bike, you're starting at $4,799 US. For this test, we've got the Trek Super Caliber 9.9. .9. It retails for $9,499 US dollars. And for that amount, you'll get Von Traeger's Kobe XXX wheels, level ultimate brakes with carbon levers, and you'll also get a SRAM XX1 Eagle drivetrain. That's enough for the numbers. Let's talk about how this modern soft tail performs on the trails. Okay, we're gonna talk about setup, of course, and you install the Schwalbe control tires as we did on all the bikes, and you use Trek suggested settings for suspension pressures. Mm -hmm. But you did have a question when it came to sizing. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, so as somebody who's 5'7", 170 centimeters, I can ride either the 17 and a half or the 18 and a half. So I'm kind of right in the middle of those two sizes and technically on paper, I can go either way. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit confusing uh, when you're trying to choose that bike, which one should you go for? I was really happy that I went with the uh, 18 and a half, but if you wanted to put a dropper post, uh, might not fit with the CT line. Why did you choose the bigger bike? I just figured looking at the numbers that the reach would be a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more stable on this bike. Uh, Especially for the terrain here. It's fairly yeah, rooty and exactly. relatively steep. And yeah, kind and of kind of compared with the other bikes that I had in those geometry numbers and figured yeah. that it would kind of fit in the best. With just 60 millimeters of rear wheel travel, the Super Caliber is the shortest travel bike here. It looks like a hardtail as well. It looks like it must've been a rocket ship on the climbs. Was that true? Is yeah. that how it worked out? Yeah, I mean, you can like wind through anything you want. It's super short wheelbase, steeper head tube angle. What is the head tube angle? It's uh, 69 degrees on this okay. one. So a degree slacker than the Canyon, yep. but the bike still feels quite short and like yep. it could sneak around the things. Yeah, 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 like it's really easy to just like navigate very technical sections of climbs. Uh, you're in a really efficient position for pedaling. It just feels really compact and comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, comfortable maybe is a little bit of an exaggeration it is a race for this bike kind of race all. bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, the position is just very natural feeling and it, it feels like you can be at one with the bike easily. 
Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you this question then. Who wins in the battle of tech? The Canyon Lux or the Trek Super Caliber? Uh, if we're going with technical climbing, I would say even though the Canyon has more travel, you would think it would be more supple, would kind of get up over those roots and stuff a little right. bit more easily. This bike, I think has better climbing traction. Like you can just make your way up things more easily. Yeah, um, same tires, yep. same air yep. pressure in the tires. Yeah, Trek just did a lot with 60 millimeters of travel. And you know, it might feel like a hard tail when you take it on gravel climbs, yeah. when you lock it out. Yeah. But when you take it onto more technical climbs, it is a bit more supple. Now there's one spot in particular on our climb. It was pretty tricky, was it? I think on enduro bikes, I'm probably batting about 200 on this spot. Yeah. So <laughs> Tell I, me about it. I call it like when I'm on my trail bike, it's like a three and 10 climb. So I'll she get it like three. She has to beat me. That's three. better than me. <laughs> Isn't I don't know, baseball 200? <laughs> I don't know. And so three times at a time, I'll actually make it. And then on these bikes, honestly, on this Trek Super Caliber, it was like a no brainer, like 10 and 10, no problem. Just like yeah. turn in tight, like didn't have to, you know, dab or hold onto the tree. Saw right. you holding onto that, the tree a couple that times. My go to move <laughs> was the hold onto the tree as you go around the tight switch back. There, there is a slippery rock there. Yeah, people. no, it's super narrow. It's super yeah. awkward. And but, uh, yeah. I mean, I was struggling with it on my slightly slacker uh, cross country bikes, my down country bikes. <laughs> and I watched her every single time on the Super Caliber just go whoop, all the yeah. way around it. Yeah, absolutely no problem. Like yeah. super, super impressive to and be able to do that. You didn't time. find that even on your other cross country bikes, did you? No. Um, I would say the Lux and the Trek Super Caliber were the easiest bikes to make that kind of super tight corner around yep. a tree. Uh, and then the other ones had to anticipate a little bit more on yep. the special. They took a little bit more brain power. Okay, so Sarah, we know that your 60 millimeter Trek hardtail or soft tail or whatever it is climbs very well. That's a given. But tell me about descending. Yeah, so six millimeters, yes, but the handling is a little more similar to the Canyon, I would say for sure on the descents. Uh, you know, a little bit more nervous. You gotta be a little bit more on it when you're coming down here. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the Super Caliber and the Lux both require a little bit more brain power when things get technical and tricky. But tell me about some other things. Tell me about the cornering on this bike. What's that like? Yeah, so it feels like you're really kind of low on the bike. It feels really easy to kind of make quick movements on the mm -hmm. descents. And I mean, it's pretty fun to ride. Like it needs a little bit more brain power, like you said, and you need to be, you know, it's a little bit harder work. Like you're definitely right. working harder. You're not resting on the descents on this bike at all. Yeah. But it's really fun to whip around corners and it's just kind of like a sporty feel. Like it, it feels like anything you put into it, it'll kind of react really quickly. So that can be a good thing if you're, you know, Mm -hmm. if you want that feeling, or it could be a bad thing if you're tired and that's when, you know, crashes happen. So I did manage to bottom out this bike, six millimeters of travel, you know, you kind of went through the bike and then through the tires. That being said, I think Trek did a really good job of balancing out that small bump compliance with that bottom out mm -hmm. resistance. It felt good everywhere else except for that exactly. one. Exactly, yeah, like it wasn't like Arguably I was bottoming. Arguably a poor line choice, to be honest. Probably a poor <laughs> line choice, like yeah. <laughs> when you're getting tired and you know, filming. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, they did a good job. It wasn't, you know, like I was bottoming this bike out all the time. It wasn't like there was a harsh bottom out. It definitely added more compliance uh, across the smoother, um, you know, little small bumps. Mm -hmm. All right, we're not getting out of here without talking timed laps. Sarah, how did the Super Caliber do? I had my slowest descending time. Ooh, Get that out of the way. Not off to a good start. Not off to a good start. <laughs> uh, but then it tied for second fastest overall, and it was okay. actually one of the faster ones on the technical part, the most technical part of the climb. We okay. kind of divided it into two sections, and there was, you know, the whole climb and then the technical climb. And uh, yeah, it did uh, very respectably there. Yeah, tied for third overall in the efficiency test. Uh, it was still a little over 10 seconds behind the Canyon Lux though. Components, like not a lot to complain about here, $9,500 US. Right. It's got, you know, carbon wheels, XX1 drivetrain, mm -hmm. super lightweight suspension. 
So yeah, pretty solid spec. The one thing is maybe those 720 handlebars, a little bit narrow. Yeah, a little skinny. A little I mean, skinny. it is an XC race bike, but these days I personally would like to see something a little wider on there, but that's yeah, personal choice. a little bit choice. more modern. And this is a Project One bike, so if you wanted this exact same bike in Shimano XT, or if you wanted to add a dropper pose, that would be super easy to do. You can also choose pretty much endless colors. Some pretty wild looking yeah, color schemes. Yeah, some really cool over. custom ones, uh, and you can kind of just mix and match whatever you want, so. Yeah, that's an awesome feature that Trek offers as well. So pros, yeah, there's great slow speed uh, handling on this bike, especially when you're climbing. Uh, it is kind of that good middle ground between a hardtail and a full suspension at 60 millimeters. Right. Like those places where you don't really need a 100 millimeter bike. Yeah, the so train for the is right fast, terrain. slow, and it yeah. can be tiring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tell us what you didn't like, Sarah. When things get a little bit steeper, not quite as um, mm -hmm. confidence-inspiring bike. And when things are a little bit rougher, it's also just, you know, it's gonna take you a little bit more time to recover. Who is this bike for, Sarah? Yeah, it is for that pure racer. Right. So um, if you're, you know, looking to go fast and you're, I'd say if you're a really good technical descender, this bike could really work in your favor. So mm -hmm. it might not be my number one choice for rougher terrain, but if you want a bike that is, you know, kind of that middle ground between a hardtail and a full suspension, it definitely fits the ticket. That's it for Trek's 60 millimeter travel super caliber. Stay tuned for more reviews and roundtable discussions from the cross country field test. In the meantime, Sarah, should we change back into our Lycra? Oh yeah. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs>